Hey everyone, welcome back to Wixfix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're gonna be covering the toolbar and everything you can do with it. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I would like to mention is if you do not have the toolbar active, what you can do is come over to tools and just make sure that toolbar is clicked on. Once you do that, this little thing will pop out and you will see that there is a bunch of different icons here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what each of them do. To make this simple, we'll just go top to bottom. So the first thing that we're gonna do is look at this. So right here, we have copy. Down below that, we have paste. So as you can assume, you can just select an element on the page, you can press copy, and then you can press paste, and you'll have another version of it. The cool thing is about this feature is you can go to a completely different page and then press paste and you'll have the same design, same layout, same style, just copied to a different page. Another thing that I would like to mention is if you are just trying to copy and paste something on the same page, you can easily just select the element and press this little duplicate. Now, as you can see, it duplicated it and it created a second element. I also would like to mention, if you hover over these, you'll notice that there are also keyboard shortcuts for these different things. So if I just press Command C and Command V, it's going to copy it. Or if I just press Command D, it's gonna duplicate it. Now I will say that sometimes in the editor, your keyboard shortcuts will just randomly stop working. And if you're just in a rhythm and you don't wanna to have to refresh your editor and wait for it to load, then you, you have these options over here to copy, paste, and duplicate. Next to that, we obviously have delete. So we can either press this little icon here to delete this element that we have selected, or we can just use the keyboard shortcut, which is delete or backspace on Windows. So now we are done with the top section and we can go ahead and move on to this little section right here. But in order for me to show you how this section works, let me just go ahead and pull out some more elements to the page. So here we have a couple different elements and let's say we like this design, but maybe we wanted the text above one of these elements. So what we can do is select the text and come over to this arrange button right here. If we click that, we'll have a few different options. So if we press this one, we'll move it forward one. However, if we press this one, it'll just move it straight to the front. So as we can see here, this text is in front of both of these shapes. However, if you have an element in the front that you want in the back, then we can easily just come over to this icon and we can either send it all the way to the back or if we just wanna move it behind one element, then we can just press move backwards. So now you can see it's behind this element, but it's in front of this element right here. Next to that, we actually have the align tool. So the align tool is something that looks like this when we click on it. And we have several different options. We can align it to the left, the right, the top, the bottom, or if we just press these middle ones right here, it's gonna align it directly in the middle of this section. Now, if I go ahead and press to the right, you'll notice it's not taking it all the way to the right of the website, it's taking it all the way to the right of our grid. So as you can see here, we have two grid lines on the Classic Editor website, and anything in between these grids will be visible on all screen sizes, no matter what screen the user is on. If we place this vector art outside of it and we press preview, then it's gonna disappear a lot sooner. So we don't really want that to happen. We want it to be at least in a visible way for our users to be able to see it. For this next one right here for distribute, I'm gonna go ahead and select these three icons right here and I'll click distribute and we'll see we have three different options. We can distribute horizontally, distribute, or even distribute vertically. If I press distribute horizontally, it's basically going to grab the end of here and the end of here and kind of space everything out evenly. If we want to distribute vertically, it's basically going to distribute everything in a vertical way. So everything is gonna be on the same level here. However, if we just press normal distribute, you're gonna notice it kind of does both at once. It distributes horizontally and vertically. Next to that, we actually have this match size icon. So if we click this, we can change it to match width. We can say to match, or we can match height. So if I just press match width, you're gonna notice that everything kind of changes to have the same exact width. 
if I press match height, everything's going to kind of shrink to have the same height. Or if I just press match, everything is going to have the same width and the same height. The next thing I would like to show you is this little rotation. So for this, we can either come over to the artboard, press this little rotation and just rotate it manually, just like this. And if we look over in the toolbar, when we are rotating it, you're gonna notice that the rotation degree number is actually changing as well. However, let's say we have a specific number in which we want to rotate it. We can either just type that in and it will rotate it automatically. We can also go ahead and put in a negative number and it will automatically do the math for us and convert it over to the degree number that we want. Underneath that, we have something called flip horizontal and flip vertical. So this does exactly what you would think. If we flip horizontally, it's gonna change it to look like this, which it might be easier to view if I go ahead and turn off the rotation. So if I flip it horizontally, nothing's really happening because it's taking the center of this and it's just literally flipping it. So it's basically just doing this to it over and over again. However, if we flip vertically, you're gonna see it flips it upside down. So it's taking the center vertically, or it's taking the horizontal and it's flipping it. Underneath this section, we have size. So if I just grab one of these corners and I start stretching it, you're gonna notice that the width and height are both changing. So for something like this, this vector art right here, let's say we want it to be like 350 pixels in width, you're gonna notice it gets longer. And let's say we want it to be like 150 pixels in height, and you're gonna notice it gets taller as well. So if you have elements that you want to have a very specific width or height, that is basically the best way to change it. Otherwise, you kind of just have to do this, and you'll notice that there are some numbers that show the width and height above the element when we're changing it. It's a little more annoying to try to, try to get the exact number that you want, just like that, rather than just coming over here and just simply typing in the number and pressing enter. The next thing I will show you is here is position. So as you can see right now, the position is currently set to an X value of 596 and a Y value of 336. However, if I grab it and I start moving it around, you're gonna notice the X and Y values are changing with it. So if I go ahead and set this to zero, zero, you're gonna notice that it basically took it to the very top of the page, and it's also the zero is set to the grid line. Even though you would think zero would be over here in the top left, zero is actually right over here on this grid line. You can see right now when I'm moving this element that the X value is set to zero. The last thing I will show you is, let's say we have a button, something like this, and we want to have this button appear on all the pages. So instead of it saying like view more, maybe it could say shop or something like that, or get in touch, we can have it say show on all pages. And basically if I go to another page, you're gonna see this button is here. If I go to another page, we're gonna see this button is here as well. Realistically, you probably don't want this button here. So instead of doing something like that, I would actually right click this and say pin to screen and we'll have this in the bottom left and it says shop or something like that. Then after we pin the element to the screen, then we could turn on show on all pages. That way it's in the bottom left of every single page, just like that. And I think that looks a lot better than just having a random button floating in the middle of the page. And the last thing that I will show you here in the toolbar is the layer panel. So let's say you, we are on a page, something like this about page. We're gonna see we have a bunch of different sections and we are trying to find an element here on the page, maybe this text. We can come to our story and just click this text and find it that way. Sometimes some elements get hidden behind other elements. For example, let's say we have this decorative little box here, just like this. And for some reason, it was covering this text and we couldn't select it or even see it. So sometimes you may need to come over to the layers panel and grab the element that you want to use and then you can edit it with the toolbar if you want. So I'm just gonna bring it to the front. That way it's above the box. Maybe that's what you were trying to do. 
and the box itself was kind of getting in the way. So the layers panel is really useful and you can also get to it just by going from toolbar and showing the layers panel like that as well. So you don't have to use the button here in the toolbar if you don't want to. I was just showing you another method of doing it. But that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and consider subscribing for more Wix and Editor X content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I'll see you on the next one.